What's up, guys? I'm glad you're back with me. I hope you're having a wonderful post-Easter time. I, for one, had a great time. I, uh, I got some good news. I'm actually going to be able to hug my mom for the first time in a year because she got the vaccination. She got the second one and should be fully vaccinated in two weeks. So that's exciting for me. Um, other than that, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on behind the scenes. I get my new tooth, actually, finally, uh, tomorrow. And, uh, so yeah, that's the last time you have to look at me without a tooth. And, uh, other than that, there's a lot of, like I said, exciting things going on beyond the, behind the scenes here, and I'm hoping to share them with you soon. And other than that, uh, today we're going to look at what I hope to be the champion of the small video light world. Yo, I feel like the champion. Oh man, yo, I feel like the champion. Oh man, yo, I feel like the champion. So of all the products that companies send to me, it really seems like I've stood out in the small video light market because I get offers to do reviews on these lights all the time. And because I've made so many videos on them, I only try to do ones that really interest me. And unfortunately, they just keep finding lights that really interest me. I've always said that I wish that they mixed an Aperture MC, which is the light that's doing my hair light right now, and this light, the Aperture F7, and create kind of a love child of those two lights. Well, I'm hoping, I haven't checked yet, but I'm hoping this light is that exactly. So this is the Falcon Eyes F7 Mark II, and I am very excited about it. As you can see on the top of the box here, it's got a Kelvin rating of 2,500 to 9,000. It's RGB, 96 plus CRI, a Lux rating of 5,230, which doesn't mean much to me because I don't know how far away that Lux rating was taken. And this little icon seems to uh, indicate to me that you can control multiple units of these at the same time. And that is true because I've tried it. And the app right there is also a big one for me. So let's open this up and boom. This is the Falcon Eyes F7 Mark II. Now the first thing I noticed is this uh, warranty void if remove sticker that's kind of falling off there, which isn't a big deal because I'm not going to return this light. Uh, let's compare the size wise next to the F7 original. So you can see they took this leg off here, and I'm sure they have another mounting option. They do have a mount option right here on the bottom, and that appears to be the only quarter 20 thread. It's a little bit bigger, you can see throughout just the overall X and Y value, and it appears to be about the same thickness, maybe a little thinner, but it's got more beveled edging and it just a better feel overall. So when you flip these over to the side, you see you have the same button arrangement as the other one. The only difference being is they moved the USB-C port fr from the top on the first one to the side, which makes a lot of sense if you ask me. And other than that, the UI is about the same. Um, I don't. This is a sticker right here. That's why it's not on that one. Um, if you look at the battery life, the battery is a little bit bigger at 7.6 volts. And then they both have this RGB guide right here, which helps you dial in uh, your RGB when you're in the uh, HSI mode. So let's take these lights out for a second. And let's see what else is inside this box here. So first you have a pretty nice case which you know me, I, I'm not a big fan of cases because I keep them all in a Pelican case because I would have way too many of these if I didn't. You get a really cool silicone honeycomb grid, which I think is probably better than the diffusers you get with lights, but you also get a diffuser if you like those sort of things. I'm not a big on these diffusers, although I do like the silicone ones better because they just feel better. Because when you're diffusing light, it's not about putting something soft in front of it, it's about making the light bigger and these don't do that, so basically you just make the light less bright with these, in my opinion. So, when you go inside of this case here, you get a USB-C cord, actually a pretty long USB-C cord. You get a hot shoe mount, and 
Ooh, yeah, a double ball head mount, which is a big upgrade over the little L bracket here. So now you can mount it in any configuration just by moving these around, getting where you want it, and tightening that up, and now they don't move. So I'm sure it's pretty obvious how you put this together right here. You just screw this onto the bottom of your lights. Put this end on wherever you want, and then, like I said, just unscrew it, put it wherever you want, and tighten it. And it will hold the light in place wherever you would like it. As it comes to the diffuser, it's a little bit different than most lights. At first, I thought it wasn't the right fit. I thought they took a diffuser from another light and just slapped it on here because when I started putting it on, it looked too small. But when you get to the front, you notice that they did it that way, so it's just a little bit beveled and out a little bit more, which is a step in the right direction, but they need to come out this way, in my opinion, to make these diffusers uh, a little bit better. Um, also, the honeycomb grid fits over in a different way, and you can put it on with the diffuser attached, which is kind of cool. So now you have the honeycomb grid and the diffuser all on the light at the same time. What a honeycomb grid does, if you don't know, it makes all the light go in the same direction. You see how you can see the whites right there? When I start to tilt it, you won't see it anymore. So the light, then the light does the same thing. It only shoots out in one direction. I have one over here, so the light's not spilling off on everything else around me. It's only hitting me. I was worried that because it fits over the diffuser, it would be too loose on the light itself. But because of the silicone stickiness, it really isn't a problem either. It's not going anywhere, even though it is a little bit looser. So now uh, let's take a look at what it looks like with the diffuser on by itself. And this is the diffuser with the honeycomb grid. And this is the honeycomb grid by itself. So yeah, later on in this video, I will uh, do a Lux reading with it and see how it stacks up to a couple other RGB lights. But for now, let's see what the UI of this light's all about. Actually, before we go into the UI, I wanna show you one more external feature of this light that I think is very cool. And the only other light I've seen with this feature besides like a Loom Cube is the Aperture MC, and that is magnetization. It has magnets inside the light, which really come in handy when you're wanting to mount these in weird places. You can mount these anywhere that has a magnetized source. So basically any metal that you can stick magnets to, like a fridge or anything else. And it's a pretty strong magnet. It's more secure than the Aperture MC. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a strong magnet and I like to see that. So we're blending the F7 size with features from the MC. So far we're on the right track. Okay, now we'll dig into the UI a little bit. So you click and hold to turn it on, and we are in HSI mode first. You also push to change the settings, so let's go to the CCT first. Let's turn the intensity down by scrolling with this knob. We'll turn it down. You can go all the way down to zero. We'll turn it down to three just so there's a little bit of light, but you can see the screen here. So as you can see, the function knob also doubles as a button. When you push that button, you can scroll through the different things. And as I said before, this goes all the way down to from 2500 all the way up to 9000 Kelvin. Now, why is that important? That means that when you go to daylight or tungsten modes, they will be brighter because they will have two light shining instead of one. Another cool feature of this light is this right here. You can shift the magenta or the green channel and you can match any other kind of light. So if you have uh, an external source that has a little bit of magenta or a little bit of green in it, right now it's really showing because I'm at 9,000 Kelvin, but uh, it can really dial in and match any kind of light source, which is something I'm surprised I don't see in more lights. So let's go to the next setting. The next setting is one you all know, that's the HSI. So if we hit this button, we can scroll through the zero to 360 wheel to get any color that we want which is always a plus. If we hit it again, we get all the special effects that people like. We can, uh, and you get different special effects. You can change the speed and the intensity, which is always a plus. And right here you have the RGB channel, so you can really dial in what color you want by um, adjusting the red, the green, and the blue channels. And L gel, now this is something I haven't seen on too many small budget lights like this. L gel stands for Lee gel. 
Lee is a company that makes some of the best gels in the business, and you can scroll through and match a gel from an external light to get the same color in here, which is awesome. You hit the set button again, and you have Roscoe gel sources, and that is just amazing to me. I'm surprised more lights don't do this as well, and it's just something you don't see very often, and you can just match the number to the number on here, and you basically have the same color of light. You can also reset all the settings on here. And yeah, that's the uh, internal UI of this light. So next up, we need to look at intensity because if it's truly going to be a mix between the F7 and the Aperture MC, we need that power that comes from the F7. So let's take a look at how this light compares to the original F7 as well as the Atom Cube RX1. This has always been my pick for the best RGB light single source that there is because it's almost as bright as the F7, but it has an app, it has a bunch of other features. So I just wanted to see how it compared to that light as well. So first let's turn on the daylight brightness of the Falcon F7 Mark II and see what the intensity is. All of these lights are going to be measured from about six feet away. So first up, the Aperture F7 II at full daylight brightness comes in at 285 lux. The Atom Cube RX1 came in at 287 lux, so it's pretty neck and neck with these two, which inevitably means that the Falcon Eyes F7 original was brighter, and it came in at a whopping 326 lux. So, yeah, it's not as bright as the original. So let's take a look at tungsten. The F7 original in tungsten comes in at 304 lux. The Atom Cube comes in at 212 lux. And the F7 II comes in at 218 lux. And in RGB, it's more of the same. It's about even with the second place light, which in RGB is actually the Falcon Eyes F7. If you look at these red, green, and blue channels side by side, the Atom Cube is actually brighter in two out of the three. And the Falcon Eyes is only brighter in one out of the three. And the F7 is about equal with the second place in all those categories. So it's not as bright as the F7. Now, why do I think that is with the bigger battery? I think, for one, the battery, they were going for more longevity than brightness. And two, they were going for a better quality of light than raw output. So the diodes are better. They take a little bit more energy than the previous version. And I think that's why they don't quite hit the mark at the brightness, but it's still the second brightest RGB light with features that are unbelievable. And I haven't even talked about the best feature yet. So one of the best features about the Aperture MC was the app. It's better than any other light app that I've used. It's the Citus Link app, and it's available both on Android and iOS. Now the Atom Cube app was the closest to that until now. Let's take a look at the app for the Falcon Eyes S2. It comes, it's called the DeSalle Light app, and it's available in the Apple Store and available in the manual to scan and get the app on Android. So first you have to turn your light on so we can see it. And as you can see here, it turns on and off your light, and, and that's all it does. You know, there's no other option. No, I'm just kidding. So you can see here, let's turn the intensity up a wee bit. Let's turn it down actually now. So at the front screen you can see this HSI wheel that I love to play with, which that's not a big deal. Most of these apps have them. You can also come in here and put the values in yourself. So if I wanted it to be at the 50 mark here, saturation to be at 100, you can put that all in manually. Okay, that's cool, but it's not something that's that unheard of. You can also put in the red, green, and blue manually if you wanted but uh, there's also sliders which is something I haven't seen before and then if you keep going you have the gels that we were talking about before but now you have a color representation of those gels both Lee and Roscoe and and that's awesome you go into the temp you can manually put in your temp like I showed before or you can hit on these right here which are some presets or you can go on the scroll wheel right here 
and that can do it there. You have the magenta and the green shift that I was talking about before, both on slider and manually being able to program. So you basically have all the flexibility you could ever want. You also have all of your effects. They're, they're in the scene file here, but you can both turn them down, turn the speed up, turn the intensity down. So these are all customizable and they have a lot of them. You can see they have three pages of effects right there. This part right here, I haven't got to work. It's supposed to be able to make the light move with their music. But like I said, I haven't gotten it to work right now. But the next part is the part that I am excited for because the only other app I've seen with this is the Aperture app. And that is the color picker. So we can go right here and pick the color of the original F7 and bam, we have that color in the light. We can go and uh, take the blue from my water bottle and bam, we have the blue from the water bottle. This is very useful because you can also put it up to lights and match lighting. So now in theory, this should match this and your lights all matched up just because you were able to put it up and pick the color with the color picker. So yeah, for me, that's all I needed to see to declare this the best single source. Obviously there's foldable lights now that can uh, beat this a little bit because of the output, but for a single small video light, this is my new champion. Right now there still is room though, if you can match the intensity of the original F7, to best this light. But right now, this is what I would put my money on as the best small video light in the market today. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and you know what to do by now. Hit that like button. It really would help me out a lot. If uh, you like my content and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Again, it would really help me out. If you know people that would like this channel and haven't discovered it, you know, maybe give me some free promotion. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna argue with that. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, just hit me up in the comments below. As long as you remember, this isn't a competition. Let's all rise in this business together. I'll see you guys real soon.